Hello and welcome to This and That. I'm Dave Lees. And I'm Jonathan Meyer, coming from North America now, but yes. still with issues. Okay. Still with issues and we are on a time crunch, so we wanted to get this episode up. I'm sure many of you will complain, but if you are new here, this is The Skating Lesson. We are going to discuss all the news that is going on this week. So be sure, if you are new here, subscribe below and smash that like button for our efforts because we are on a major time crush. Jonathan was throwing a soiree last night <laughs> at his house. And just Mid everyone... Concert. All right, so I'm going to give you... I'm going to talk like the man in the Micro Machines commercials and give you my big takeaways. Well, I was telling you this because you were in attendance and I said, your, your videos now on YouTube where you're giving us your news voice... Yeah. Stellar. Oh, well, thank you. Stellar. Thank you. I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Now, and those are just out of expediency. Like, we don't have, like, we can't keep up, okay? It just comes naturally, doesn't it? Yeah, okay. Listen, I watched, I wanted to be on 2020 as a child, okay? Like, that was well, the most exciting. Well, you are exciting. my Barbara Walters to my Hugh Allen. <laughs> but I, I like to tell what I think at the end. I think people enjoy yeah. that, and yeah. Right. That's what they're really tuning in for. Like, I'm going to give yeah. my talk on Jonathan Soiree, okay? Okay. I You're going to recap it right now. <laughs> you know, it's a holiday party. I love to be the least fancy person in the room. There were a couple stragglers who no one knew how they really got in there. There was a boy that looked like he was in the AV squad. But most people, yeah. very fancy. Very yeah. opera crowd, okay? Okay. I bring Michael Shanley with me. You know, he decides, he decides to talk to Jonathan's new boo. German, great hair, everything that you would expect, very fancy, not a normal person. A nice person, but not every day. So Michael Shanley goes, oh, what do you do for work? And he's like, oh, I work for Carolina Herrera. And he's like, oh, oh, have you ever actually met her? No, Michael Shanley loves a fancy biatch, okay, in the okay. fashion world. Loves Vera Wang, loves okay. Carolina Herrera. Like, more than, more than a person should, he's very gay, he is that person, right? Okay. <laughs> So Jonathan's new boo goes, why, of course, I only work with her for 16 years. And it's like... <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. It's hard to understand. And I don't know much about the fashion industry. Obviously, I'm like wearing like a parka. Um, but it's, he works with Carolina. Like he was yes, the they are like Carolina. these. They are like these. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> it was like, oh, oh okay. He was sipping martinis. Um, was there was some old gay that was with Jonathan's boo who had Her, this Hervé Pierre. Hervé Pierre, who's a very famous fashion designer, came. Yeah, well, I hated those pants he was wearing, and he was. The oh, two you're of, talking about the different one. You're talking about the different one. He works it, for Ralph Lauren, designs for them. Okay, <laughs> so many. Okay, my favorite person of all of the crowd because I thought we were gonna have like a nice holiday sing along. We could do a nice viral video. All well, we I freaking no, you we couldn't because. All you people are ridiculous. I asked all of you, and it's what the TSL viewers wanted, and people need to know that, like, I am from Jersey. I only had to explain that I was from Jersey about 20 times. There were some people, they were very curious that I didn't live in Manhattan. You know what? It was hilarious. Okay, but anyway, I love how I have to you give You showed them your passport, yeah. I showed them my passport. It was fine, all right? But okay. um, only person that I like. My favorite is Jonathan's friend, Tammy. She's the only one that's like somewhat down to earth. Love her. she's a gymnastics person. Yes, and that doesn't mean that I didn't like the other people. They're yeah. very nice. They're just not on this planet, okay? Right, like, right, right. So we decide that we're going to have like a Christmas carol sing-along. I only ask people for like, I don't know, 20 minutes. There was that, that piano player that's with Jonathan. He was wearing a dress that he made into a sequin blouse for the event <laughs> because, of course, all right? He wasn't there playing the piano, even though that's his only role, to play the piano in Jonathan's videos. Amazing, he, amazing. He also brought someone to the party that everyone was a little uh, about. Anyway. Yeah, it happens, it happens. They decide to play. You think we're going to sing Christmas carols, maybe a little Jingle Bell Rock? You know, maybe we could get the opera singers doing Jingle Bell. Hey, this, this part was not told to me. This is why you need someone from Jersey there, because Jonathan and friends think that when we're going to play Christmas carols, oh, Let's play the Nutcracker on piano. Oh, let's think with words. Oh, we can do, we can do a duet. That's what we do. Yes, yes. Happy holidays, everybody. Happy holidays, everyone. <laughs> this is why you need someone from Jersey there to direct this, okay? You're all we too high We could have done a carol sing-along. That would have been easy to Although, easy. I don't think I'd ever heard this Christmas cracker song that Tammy did. I didn't know it existed until Tammy was like, I want to sing Christmas cracker. And she like loved, the Christmas crackers you pull, by the way. Yeah, Just and she. And then she made some joke about the fact that you know 
a, yeah, bunch, of, <laughs> a bunch of white people at a party in Harlem. It was great. Okay, okay. she gets it. Okay, <laughs> Tammy and I were at the Miss New York pageant, another highbrow event that Jonathan was judging. Again, this was a mixed crowd, but I met this one from Emerson who was very nice. There are some people. See? I may or may not have scored an invite to his holiday party next weekend. I think I did. Okay. I think you did. You're great. You're great. <laughs> and Jonathan's, um, I looked at all of the finishings in your apartment. Cause my We're getting Jenny, close. We're getting close to being done. And I, when Melinda came in, I said, don't worry, Melinda. We can send the finishings out. It's fine. <laughs> and she was like, do you really not like them? And I was like, okay, this is joking. Again, HGTV, again. HGTV throwback joke. Yeah. All right. <laughs> But I was sending pictures to La. She was having fear of missing out, even though she didn't RSVP. But she I know. All... I saw that on I saw that on the interwebs that she, she opened my invitation but did not reply. But she texted me, said she wasn't coming. Oh, she wanted all of the details. So Yeah, okay. But I went skating. Do you remember back in like 2010 when Dance Moms was popular and so was New Jersey because of Jersey Shore and right? Real Housewives? The Housewives. Yeah. There was a one episode reality series called Jersey Ice that they filmed like an ISI competition in Floyd Hall with Michelle and Dina. Well, I went and I've been skating in Floyd Hall with those Jersey sisters and like big time skating fan Grant Naroyan is there. I'm take I took the edge class with Igor Lukanin from Russia. His wife is very white and American. They represented Azerbaijan. Very normal in skating, right? right? <laughs> He's a great that teacher. Old story. Yeah. We were in an edge class doing the It's movie. amazing. Oh my God. He is so like, he's like a geometry teacher for the body and the blade. Okay. He just explains Doesn't it. Seem all. Like that? I mean, don't you find that the most fulfilling of the classes? Um, I, well, I work with Freddie Boudet from people from Sea Alive would know. And he's all about the flair and the flourish. And then you have Igor who is like, I said, I'm Dave. I know who you are. I'm like, uh oh, hi, hi, hi. And nice to meet you, yeah. <laughs> he's, he's actually very funny. He's just like very dry in a Russian way. We okay. love him, so. Okay. So anyway. But speaking of Russians and sisters, no, I'm just kidding, that would have been Marina Hoffman, <laughs> honestly, so last week before, when this all happened, I like randomly, because you know when Instagram suggests things, I started mm -hmm. to see that maybe a Terry tagged a picture and then I, I clicked on who the person was. Then I saw a picture with a Terry and all four of her sisters and I was very fascinated by all of this. And it keeps reminding me of that movie, Hannah and Her Sisters. Can we even make that joke? Woody, Woody Allen's been canceled a long time ago, right? He's yeah, the only person that's it's, not it's really- It's that line of, are we still allowed to talk about the movies? Yeah. Well, I feel like a Terry and her sisters could also be, um, they are delivering, okay? We can't even keep track. I have, you have to run. So I have to film another video about Plushenko because Plushenko, which we know his, really his wife authored, authored this. She has a lot of thoughts for a Terry too. Okay. So that came back, you know, a Terry had a long message. Plushenko's wife had pages on his official Instagram, okay? Receipts, if you will. That wife keeps him in line and she is coming. But I'm intrigued to talk. So I was watching your, um, <clears throat> I was making a reference to the South Park video. They have this like spoof news episode called Sexy Action School News. And I do think you need to scope it out because the voice is like so similar and I absolutely love it. But I've been so enjoying it. Yeah, right? It just flows out of you. <laughs> so, but I was watching the, um, the WADA episode you did and the Atari clapback. And, but this is a culture, we knew that Frank mm. always took a portion, right? Yes. Wasn't that, and you talked about it in your interview with him. Can you remind me exactly what their deal was? It's a normal percentage. It's like, totally. a, it's like a 10%, maybe a 20, maybe a 50, but that's always been suspected to have something that was going to do with Michelle's split with Frank, but no one ever talks about it. You know, in the old Queens, you know, we do not talk about money. That's very garish. You know, right, of course, right. the Russians, like, you know, they get funding from the Federation, but when you get funding from the Federation, the coach also gets a percentage. And there are different deals, like, because the coaches are also paid by the Federation, whether or not a Terry has to give some of her portion of the Federation, you know, like every coach has different arrangements. She is at the highest status of Mother Russia, okay? Like, well, she should be. I mean, she's delivering the highest results. But my also my question is... Um, so this you is know, like, we're dealing with narcissists and egos here. So we have a Terry's ego, Tarasova's ego, 
Plushenko's ego. Amazing. Okay. Yeah, like all of these players. But so my question is, does the system in Russia, do those Sambo 70 girls, are they paying a Terry and that team in the same way Frank was paid or the Federation Honey, covers she gets 40%. 40 percent. No, she gets 40 percent of what they're earning. But my question is, is on top no, of that. No, no, no. They don't pay her an hourly because the Russian Federation covers that. When so this in some way does make it a slightly different story. Like the thing that, that was tricky about Frank is you're paying for his time and on top of that. Yes, you were however, right. he can't like necessarily take you for life. You know, at that point in time, Michelle probably was planning on winning the Olympics and going off and, you know, maybe going to college, doing a couple of specials. But that was a big negotiation point of right. contention, which has right. never officially been confirmed. However, that is... And then on top of it, it remember like, Tim Gable was very upset because at a certain point his contract with Frank said that he had to pay him a percentage for the season, and Frank fired him, and he still had to pay Frank a percent when he medaled at competitions. Like there was a certain end date mm -hmm. on that contract, and that thing was okay. enforced. So, yeah, and that well, and Tim, Tim was salty about that for years, and really not that much money. So, okay, and they're well, fine. Now, now. Tim our, wrote a very lovely thing to Frank. Uh, when Frank was on Ice Theater of New York, all water under the bridge. But it, right, right. But wouldn't Tim have also been paying his also, manager? Also, Dorothy Hamill and Carthy, Carlo Fossi got in a huge uh, lawsuit over this kind of right. thing. So this is very normal in skating business when people win, just so you know. This is not... But let's just say, let's say, for example, say someone's paid $100,000 to do a show. Also, no. Robin Wagner, Sarah Hughes, notice that they never mention each other's existence. Right. Eyes on that. Okay. Well, I, for this very reason. Notice I mean, that Sarah went to college for a year and then toured. All of it goes back to these contracts. Okay. Right. Continue. It kind of makes sense. But especially when you're, if you're going to take out 20%, 10% for a manager and then give another 10, 20%, I mean, all of a sudden. You have to pay the Russian Federation even when you're a professional as these skaters. Well, if, I mean, and this goes back to some of our discussions about the Katarina Witt um, situation when she was talking about um, that uh, if the government has invested in you, for you now then to go take advantage of all of their investment in you seems unjust to the Federation. It, since, their, since their training is covered, I mean, it kind of just funnels back in to train more people in a way. I don't know. It's different than obviously in the United States where people are hemorrhaging money on the training costs. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right? Like, so I feel like I have paid for your services. I don't need to continue to give you. Yes as I do things, but in this Russian- but There's a lot of control that they, different. you know, there's a lot of control that comes with that. So- oh, totally. Yeah, totally. And then this is why these athletes can't ever officially retire because they still will, some of them will still be on the payroll a season or two after they're not competing. And that's why some of them will still pretend to be kind of training and we never officially get official retirements from a lot of these skaters, so. And it's, it, yeah, it's an interesting thing. <clears throat> I, I wasn't following because Alina in her um, statement mm -hmm. about that retirement not Clearly retirement. authored by a Terry or approved. Yeah, because it is so specific, but in every way it says there's no coaching problem. It was right. so overly reiterated Yet. several times. It was quite redundant, actually, in several sections. Yet in everything that came out from a Terry, from her sister, from uh, the article that was clearly sourced by them, it was like, she is lazy, the coaches tried everything. Um, and it's she, like, but, but I thought Alina owned that sort of like, that the motivation is gone for a moment and to train at that level takes so much and she doesn't have that at the moment. Yeah, well, that the whole which thing, I believe is the truth. Yeah, well, the negotiations with Plushenko seem to really do that in. All right, okay. So you think that was him trying to just make a money deal for both of them? Just uh, sweep in and say, now if you say I'm your coach, now I'll take less of a percentage. I'll give you this. Listen, it's all wheeling and dealing. He's brought in a lot of students to that school. They haven't really panned out, but remember, he kind of is with Sotnikova, and Sotnikova has the same agent as Plushenko with Ari Zakarian, but then his wife is also an agent, so they put the shows together. Um, she also is with Edvin Martin, that violinist that's always playing when Plushenko right, is around, right, right. that was on Eurovision. So, and his wife is very powerful. So, it's, and remember, he has the Kings on Ice show, and Alina might be appearing in Kings. I mean, all of this stuff has clearly been in the works for months, okay? That's why when we have been saying that she is retiring, one, we have eyes. Her triple loop combination has been going. 
they said like you you could see the technique going even from last year and it's clear right. that terry decided to put it into her and make her win the worlds and it happened and, and it's so funny how quickly we forget all this stuff it, and i always think that when we talk about gracie's world experience in boston mm -hmm. where it was as if her she was having a dream season and one thing blipped at the world championships it was like okay yes alina won that world championship but it was a huge accomplishment because it was a tough season. Like yes. it should be noted, like she she made that monumental effort to win that, mm -hmm. and it was amazing. But um, that would have been a nice time to exit, so she could end on a high. Uh, you know so what I mean? I, we've been talking about this offline even since last season when we thought she would retire because it was clear last year that her technique wasn't going to improve. She was not going to get these consistent quads. It would have had to happen earlier. It was just it was yeah. At a time where you have to rev up, she was finding it difficult to maintain. Yeah. yeah. And it was clear last year that the technique was going and the consistency was going. Um, yeah. So I think that, and it was, it goes back to her coaching, it goes back to the way that they teach this technique. And Elena Vytsehovsky wrote, look, they don't adjust the technique because they don't have to. They don't right. have to. They, they have adjust another... the stator, not the technique. Yeah, they have another one coming in, honey. And they'll right. work on that one and get the quads, but they're not going to worry. They can put you into the shows, get that 40%. You're a champion, and we got another one. And it's brilliant. Look, those Louis Vuitton jackets do not pay for themselves. Danny <laughs> G, well-appointed himself, has that Louis Vuitton scarf. Like, But they've done an incredible job more than any other camp. They're, they have a total brand. Yeah. I mean, I, you know all this from all your work and like social media and like marketing and branding and all this sort of stuff. I mean, they've done it. Yeah. It, it's a complete package. And, and she's become, her success and victory has become almost like a part of Russian nationalism too. Yeah. She's 100%. like a symbol of that. That's why because when you can rely on it. And then when Evgenia left and went to a non-Russian coach of all things, although I do think that if Evgenia went to Buyanova, that would have been... Amazing, but yeah. um, no, then we could have gotten the real show. <laughs> but a Terry wasn't in the point yet. Like, there's clearly a pissing match between a Terry and Tarasova. Pretend to like each other in public, but you can tell that there's machinations there going on. Right. So <clears throat> that would be incredible. So Tarasova has got to get behind her girls, and I think she does a good job. Tarasova has like, to. The, yeah, you, you cannot speak badly about her. Although, until Instagram, that opened up. Although Tarasova still didn't say anything, but Plashenko did through the wife. Well, and that's when Tarasova knows what's up. Because mm -hmm. you can't poke this this bear. You know what I mean? Like, I was... Once yeah, but Plashenko kind of is the champion. Gritty, gritty. Like, there's the coach and there's the champion of Plashenko, who's also... I mean, they came guns blazing. When yeah. she called him not a real coach... Um, I would say it, yeah, but, but it doesn't need to be said, one would think. I mean, the, she's so clearly lashing out to something happening behind the scenes, and it was like, with the statement alone, with Alina's statement where, like, the Terry has been right? controlling that Instagram account from a long time, yeah. so yeah. she's great at it. Skating likes to control the narrative. She's great at knowing when to drop her students doing different quad elements, everything. So... Yeah. Trust me, if Zagitova had a clean quad that was consistent, we would have seen it. Well, and that's, you mentioned that, and I think that's, again, we talk about the harness, and it's, like, charming. We also saw Gracie do a quad lutz and a harness. I mean, let's both both girls figure out your loop, you know, before we get there, the triple loop. Like, yeah. So. Yeah. Right. So. Also, the WADA stuff is very interesting, because if you got to think about it, remember, and there were articles, again, about the meldonium that came out, I, I would imagine that Russia has found a new Meldonium. I, I don't think that, I, I think what we have seen is that clearly this has not deterred. Well, WADA is so seemingly at points archaic and reactive and behind the they're times. They're behind the times. Yeah, it's are, a chemistry battle. There are several steps ahead, yeah. If you're determined to keep winning, and if it's 2019 and you're deleting old entries from a database before you give it to WADA, and right. coming up with fake messages from someone that's in hiding <laughs> in the U.S., Incredible. Also, right. um, you clearly have not been deterred by any of this. So I imagine that some, the more and more we see quads, the more and more it goes to me. Well, what are they taking now, Jonathan? Right. Yes, right. they are great athletes. Also, they have not had any deterrence. Right. Right. Or major injury when what they're doing is really inhuman at times. Yeah. yeah. I mean, come on. 
They're right. the only country. Everyone is training. They're the only country that knows how to do this. Like, come on now, right? right. Like, you have to think about it logically. And people are gonna, people will flame that comment, and that's fine because. Well, but because let's talk about it. If it does mean just like okay, these out outrageous jumps at such an early age. Well, then if we look to someone like Alyssa Liu, Liu, does it mean? That we wonder they're also, or we wonder less. Jonathan, but notice that she's not that lineage. Notice she's not doing them nearly as well. Notice that she cannot get those rotations around. They are not. It is like, it is like an amateur playing against professionals. Okay, yeah. like yeah. Also, why does the Russian team have a young doctor that's always with them at all of the competitions? That's right. That's always around the boards. Yeah. It's very interesting. Um, yeah. Like. The fact that everyone knows who the doctor is, he's in photos with the Terry students, like, it's amazing, right? Right. He's very attractive. He looks like, right? I like when you refer to, in one of the videos, attractive Sergei and Sergei Vajudikov. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't remember his last name. It just... Okay, it, okay. <laughs> and people don't really know who he is yet, because that's yeah. one of the things is that... I'll just talk about the Plushenko video. They have a whole system. It's like the Caroli system on steroids. You know, right. Terry has under... Literally. Ling coaches and yeah so anyway these um i mean do you really think and this is what i thought as all this was being posted and people were asking my opinion it's one of those things water can say whatever they want mm -hmm. but everything can be appealed nothing could be enforced do you know what i mean it could be this it's like, gonna be the oar for some time although this is getting more serious you know they are doing it to themselves the whole thing with the deleting of entries to the uh you know, deleting of entries through the database, it becomes a real problem because they're thumbing their nose at WADA. They're never going to have that information, it, really, right? And right. the thing is, it becomes like, are you really going to kick Russia out of the games completely? They have so much power, so much political power, so much. And then are the Olympics, can the Olympic brand even survive without Russia in it? Or is it going to be kind of a joke? It'll always have that asterisk next to it. And the you kind know of I mean? PR it's... campaign that they, in today's world, the kind of PR campaign that would come from kicking them out, it would be such a nightmare. And I feel that the Olympic movement, because it's so oversaturated, you know, moving from the four years to the every two years, it does kind of feel like there's an, if you follow, you know, more than one Olympic sport, it becomes that there's an Olympic champion every five seconds, right? So it's right. not as... Right special after right. a while and I think well, it would always be that thing let's say they do this OAR and let's say Russian athletes decide not to do it if they can't and they truly ban it or something mm -hmm. like that whoever wins this gold medal like for let's say for the ladies would always feel like the fourth place girl that really benefited from a situation it would so cheap unless you're Mary Lou Retton who believes that she deserved that gold medal <laughs> well you know what yeah take it to the bank honey but like yes. <laughs> But there is that side note among the super fans that's like, well, it wasn't really... And who was the one talking about... The thing is, is that when they did this in 84, there was an alternate Olympics. Mishin was talking about doing that. Yeah, that's, it was Mishin, yeah. Social media didn't exist then, right? If you have an, a separate Olympics now, we're going to watch one on NBC, and then we're going to watch the, the Russian Olympics, and you can see the clips in real time... That's devastating for the Olympics. That's going to look like a joke. Like public opinion right. will probably turn unless they could really prosecute. And it doesn't seem the IOC has that kind of power. To Especially do that. with the depth of their talent right now. Yes. With so, the depth of their talent, it's like all the best ones. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like it would. I would watch Russian nationals with the same intensity that I watch the Olympics. Guess who is commentating Russian nationals? Think about who has really kissed the ass of Russia all along, said Johnny. only glowing No, things. it's not Johnny. No, it's, no, even more glowing. Who is Terry's biggest fan? Oh, Ted? Yes. No. <laughs> yes. Well, you know what? I mean, I, I, can't, I can't fault Ted for that because if you're if your mission is to promote the Junior Grand Prix and the, you know all these junior events on the ISU, you've got to. That's the that's the goal. Remember, head. Canada hates Russia. The Canadians all think they're cheating. They all think they should be kicked out. But Ted has said nothing. I imagine Ted is very shocked by all of the water news and yeah, playing it right down the middle. These hardworking girls. I mean, I really need to is, know like what Ted is like in real life. Is he always that like? I mean, it's a lot. It's a lot to take in. Very nice man. He's yeah. kind of like that and, uncle, and, 
I imagine. And doing good things for the sport, but yes, it is sort of like we just kind of turn turn. I imagine a blind he eye. likes to decorate for holidays, right? I imagine he's really in no judgment here. <laughs> I think so. I imagine, like, I imagine Ted is a very festive man, like, oh, yes, so. I mean, it would be, and it would be a totally different story, actually, if anyone was more competitive on, on that junior round. Why I grade. say I disappoints me, because I like, I like Plushenko's agent, Ari Zakarian, and Tatiana Flad covering it. It's like old friends, Ari Zakarian, such a mythic figure. He was right. in Champions on Ice in that duo. Right. With the acrobat, that, and then, you know... He was the other passenger with Oksana Bayul. I mean, there's something just fantastic what? about Ari commentating. It gives the Russian flavor. He's able to make jokes about Morozov and, and the wife. And, like, there's so much, like, undercurrents of shade, but not really. And now... So the super fans that are, quite frankly, tuning in for it. Yes! And now we're yeah. going to have Ted. Yeah. He understands none of the backstory of these people. We learn right. interesting nuggets when Tatiana Flad and Ari does it. Like, I don't need Ted to over-commentate every... Jenny's roommate really doesn't like how he has to commentate every turn on a transition. He thinks okay. that Ted has a nervous condition where he has to keep talking when the skating is going on. Fill the silence. <laughs> Fill the silence. Okay. <laughs> so. Well, I mean, it's it's pretty interesting. Actually, what I am, but he doesn't like to get too much in the nitty gritty. He started talking about under rotations at a point or close calls. And what I will say like is. Jackie when Wong it, talking about American under rotations. Like it has to. That's right. I'll tell you there's, what. A, there's always a question mark now. Have you noticed that? Is yeah, it's like part allegedly, of the US, allegedly. Allegedly under rotated. Yeah. But I mean, I actually liked when Chris was doing it for the senior event on the ISU because he was showing us what was popping up on the screen. Yeah. Okay, they are reviewing this in real time. Okay, yes. they aren't calling Facts. me. Facts. They are okay. calling Like, that's informative. Because, again, there's nothing wrong with being a positive commentator. But when you make it seem like everyone was great, then I don't understand why there are such disparate... But is this a competitive know. sport or are we in kindergarten? That's what you have to... Yeah, like, really someone's going to win. They're out to win. And so let's understand why this one is here and this one is here. Yeah. yeah. So... I mean, Those calls do that for you. I mean, if Tarasova could speak English better, I would like her to commentate Russian nationals. She could do it in oh, every language. Okay. Or passion alone, because it also, you know, when it's broadly nice, it, we, if we miss If Tarasova could commentate in English, Russian nationals, that would get, like, blockbuster ratings. Because people pay, would be like, I pay who? to watch it. Imagine if they showed her in the booth on US TV. People would be like, who is this woman? What? She looks like what like come on yeah. you know i think don't you think she should be a christmas ornament on my tree yes well a lot of them look like her jonathan i was examining those ornaments last night taking pictures i have favorites <laughs> so yeah um yeah i mean i think there needs to be a tatiana one but it's clear there's there's this upheaval here they're gonna between tarasova and plashenko and the satiri camp like this is this is trouble if i was the federation i'd be like everybody calm it also, everybody step back. No, keep going. They have Russian nationals. Get those ratings up. It's good for the sport. It's good for intrigue. Ratings blockbuster. Okay, keep I fighting. Know. And now that we've got Elizabeth. Didn't you earn any, learn anything from Tanya and Nancy? The more you talk about it, the more people watch. The more people watch, the more we can fund for years to come. This is why skating is inherently wrong. Have all of the reality shows. Spinning out on Netflix looks fabulous. January yeah, Jones. Yeah, is it out yet? Because we're going to no, watch it. No, January 1st, our New Year's okay. present. Okay? Okay, yeah. I'm going to bed early on New Year's so that I can get up early the next morning with my coffee and watch. And I already know that there are a million people that are TSL viewers, probably Tracy Brown, Desiree from Canada, they'll have watched it and be messaging me about it constantly. Amy so you got to stay on it. you got to stay on it. So Amy Russell will be like, did you see Spitting Out yet? I don't want to spoil it for you, but did you see that scene where this one? <laughs> I mean, come on. Yes, this is What's great. so funny, because I like when people reach out, but like sometimes they really do like, I can't believe what happened when blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I didn't see it yet. That <laughs> Daniel Lee that you know has sponsored some of the Patreon right. videos, he, he will just tell me everything that's happening in the competition as it's going on, whether I want to see it or not. And I'm like, I'm at work. And, it, I know, it, it and, and it's so much more enjoyable when you don't know what's coming. I mean, I've just... Look, there's no way I'm going to get through a competition unspoiled. I just you have to accept it, and you have. It to. feels more like a like a book report than like oh you're God. like token watching who finished second instead of watching it unfold, which is where the real magic yeah, happens. I sent out an email before hours after an event before someone had time to see it, and like the dramatic email I got back, I was like, oh man. Like, this is a lot, like, spoiling. You don't want to do that for someone, Jonathan. That I know. Even though I love Ann Jensen, she posts those result pages. 
Excuse and me. Anne Jensen is doing a public her. service. Okay, she is the matron of Emma Morton of figure yeah. skating, and you need to be one of the chickies. But no, I love because I usually I do love like seeing it, but when I'm like about to watch it live, I and I see just that format, I literally like look away. Excuse me, <laughs> Anne Jensen is our Tarasova. She can do no wrong. Okay. Bingo. Bingo. I don't know that I've seen her in a big fancy fur, though. We need to make sure that happens. Um, she was very fancy when she accompanied Frank to New York when we were in Vegas. I was following those. Okay. <laughs> also. The day by day New York trip. But yeah. I find her Krista Fossey stories much funnier. We're going to have to get interview Krista and plan it. You know, I know. This is She's like the, the um, what's it called? I don't know. Like that enigmatic character that has all of the tea. Also, she's. Austrian royalty, okay? And she's skating royalty. And refers on. to Krista Fossey as the Baroness, and she's not really kidding, okay? No. <laughs> That's... Yeah, hopefully not the one from Sound of Music that wanted to ship him off. Excuse me. Excuse me, Jonathan. I love this Sound of Music. I would have done the same. <laughs> My favorite child in uh, The Sound of Music is Angela Cartwright, by the way. If anyone was wondering, she's my girl, okay? Which one did she play? Excuse me. I'm Louisa, she's Brigitte. The one with the pigtails, it's Arca. Brigitte, Brigitte. Oh, Brigitte, fascinating. Mm -hmm. Remember, she, she's a little precocious. She was involved with mm -hmm. that pine cone situation. Right. She, she was in uh, Make Room for Danny, Make Room for Daddy. Uh, there was the episode, Make Room for Daddy, the episode of the- She's Louisa in the rhythm Day. dance for Hubble and Donahue? No. I was giving an illusion because Tracy Lee Brown is going to comment the episode of the Lucy Desi Comedy Hour is called Make Room for Daddy and I know Tracy okay. cannot stop herself. Anyway, okay. Jonathan. <laughs> the Hubble Donna Rhythm Dance, what a mess. Okay, these people yeah. learn nothing. Oh. Anyway, uh, the Marie France things, there was a Polish team. We only got 75 messages about this. That's right. So that judge just means she had a, another judge on the panel. Okay, Marie yeah. France. Queen icon legend. Okay, I mean, incredible. she's collecting her advent calendar of international judges. Imagine if she got in a fight with the Terry. Although apparently, when Marie, so Patrice messages out the schedule each week, and apparently, when you're an ice dancer in that school, if they text you, you're expected to stop whatever you are doing and text them back immediately. You oh. can be in the, but these skaters are so flaky. That like, of course, you someone has to be like that. Imagine if you had fifteen teams with thirty skaters who can't. And you're function. trying to coordinate this matrix of a schedule among all of them. Yeah. People forget because we see them on TV and they look very beautiful. These people don't know how to function in society. So many of them have been so pampered they don't know what end is up. Right. Okay. Right. Could tell you a lot of stories, honey. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> um, they they just like aren't in reality. So Patrice has to like, but. Apparently, you don't mess. You you text I back. I want to make Patrice happy. <laughs> I want to make Patrice very happy, okay? Apparently, he never even has to, like, bat an eyelash or yell. You just know, okay? I would believe that. You would think it would be Marie France, but he seems to be, like, actually... His whole presence is scary. He, he's yeah, just... I'm into it. She is, like... She is the flower. He is the stem. Okay, yeah, that is exactly. a sturdy, focused stem. <laughs> Speaking of our stem, how about Christine Brennan keeping us all on the straight and narrow, Jonathan? Oh, Dave, that was tough. Oh. And there's a lot going on. I was supposed to interview her, and we're going to postpone it. Christine and I talked about it. There's a okay. lot. She's got a lot of irons in the fire. She is. Yeah, I bet. Out. Okay. Tough, tough to read that article, of course, because. You don't know people. They were on the show. They were a lovely interview. You know, I mean, obviously, yes, I adore their skating, but that has nothing to do with anything that it sounds like is happening. So um, as it unfolds, yeah, it's tricky. Again, I, I talked to you like I was so confused by that pizza paragraph. But, so um, I am a true crime aficionado. And okay, I believe that. <laughs> Shade. Um, anyway. <laughs> no, um, no I mean, investigative. So, like, I, I, I'm, yeah. Real crime profile. It's done by the FBI uh, behavioral analyst and, um, oh my God, London Yards, whatever. No, Scotland Yards, behavioral analyst. Law. Scotland Yards. Yeah. So <clears throat> they always talk about when some detail is so strange, it's usually correct. 
And that was in an episode where we were talking about the show The Keepers and the whole thing that the police had shown a man that they claimed it was Sister Kathy's vagina that was like on the, and it was like, everyone's like, what? Pause, what? And, and they just kind of like keep going in the documentary. The pizza felt the same way for me. The pizza was like, what? However. Such a weird detail, yeah. I, it's so hard to like, so I believe that the facts as they're reported are the facts, but I do think that there is likely a whole bigger story here. Like uh, just lots of details that we will find out in the coming. And context, I, I mean, context. and that's the thing, when you kind of read these articles- That doesn't that obviously... excuse anything, but the no. article, they were very specific about only like things that they could corroborate, you know, especially with the pizza and things. They have to, things they like... are so careful, yeah. But it was very confusing with the pizza for people. And that, and there was a fourth person in the story that came out of nowhere. Right. And people are like, who and what and why? And so... This is clearly the beginning of a thing. Yes. And, and I, yeah, I think it's it needs to be context. The story as it is printed. I just... I think that we're going to learn a lot more in the coming weeks. I just... Some and this falls under a safe sports situation because uh, from from Morgan specifically, so they can't or go after Morgan around. in safe sport. You know, even, even though he trains in the United States right. at a U.S. rink, that but and there have always been it. stories that like Morgan was also giving like unofficial lessons to the victim, but I don't like you can't corroborate that. And obviously, there's right. no paper trail. This is all a cash business. So right. um, and like, who knows if that's true or not true? I mean, every there are so many stories that file around. They can't get him in tr like safe sport can't really do anything. Now, criminally, that is a different story if the, the police when they're get brought involved. However, right. If, you know, allegedly, uh, a million allegedly is here, although right. text messages were sent from his account, whatever. Uh, uh, the Peace. coaches are the bigger story. And I believe that's why Christine focused on the coaches is because yeah. Safe Sport could issue some sort of a disciplinary action there. Um, and it just becomes a big thing. So my thing about this whole story and why I really wanted to talk to, why I do want to talk to Christine is that I, in the deepest part of my soul, I honestly feel that in the John Coughlin situation, what has been lost is the actual there, there, the culture that was. The enabling made. of that kind of behavior. Right. Yeah. Not just that specific behavior in those moments. Yeah. I believe that that was the thing that has been completely lost. It became all about grief, uh, allegations, not having a day in court. Like, it became so much about other things, but the there, there never has been able to discuss. You cannot have allegations. You cannot even discuss what happened without a million comments that the man is dead. You know, skating has not confronted any of these issues. We just saw the Salt Lake City skating uh, right. club president being arrested for this kind of a thing. Um, we th see stuff in Connecticut. We see stuff in Minnesota. I mean, all around the country, skating is not looking at itself. And we, you know, the USFS, they talked about wanting an investigation to Coughlin. We've not never heard that they hired an independent investigator. Right. They could have done that themselves. Uh, why didn't they do that? Well, if Safe Sport investigate well, something safe, safe sport safe. never makes its results public an individual investigator would likely make that stuff public so skating yeah. we saw with callahan they like to control the narrative keep everything under wraps and they've not looked at themselves and i think that yeah. how many people knew about callahan a lot a lot of people who've been on this show who coached at those rinks who were there mitch moyer is in the kiss and cry with Callahan in 2000. How many people knew things but are from a culture where they have been trained to overlook it? Go on, on, that's right. And that's the thing, like when Safe Sport was like, we, we aren't continuing this investigation because the active threat is gone. Mm -hmm. But like you're saying, the active threat is the culture, not one person. So I've gotten a ton of anonymous emails over the last year, many of them involving Morgan. Many of them made a couple of reports. Um, well, different organizations. Mm. Uh, and what I would say is 
a lot of people, when they wrote, said, um, please do something about this. You know that you can't say anything in skating because there are repercussions if you speak out. And that line has been said by in various uh, ways by different And people. that's exactly what you're talking about. And that's exactly that the whole the point. Scary. Yes. Yeah. That is the most scary. Yeah. Because I believe that I believe it's true, right? Like, um, well, I would imagine the you know safe sport is like what is uh, like they're probably inundated mm -hmm. with these kinds of allegations and the tons. I mean, yeah. And then there's what the federation does, which is the non-sex things, and then there's the sex things is what safe sport handles the safe sport right. center because then there's also usf usfs safe sport uh, and they would look at uh bullying things like that so and when they were taught i mean some people i was just reading a couple of comments i mean it's so quick to to just jump on these bandwagons for some people when they were talking about the isu and isu and french federation but like does the the isu doesn't really have some version no. of safe sport. No. So right? it, it, there's really no... So say this is all... I mean, safe sport moves very slowly. So don't think that this is going to be resolved in five minutes. Okay? Yeah. This is going to take a long time. Um, and you have to think that France is kind of banking on Vanessa and Morgan to help them get a team medal. And now DDA, and DDA got them a lawyer. You know, the French Federation has been having financial problems for years, but they are getting a lawyer... Look, DDA wants that team medal, honey. They have a man, they have a pair team, they have a dance team. All they need is a lady to get their act together. So I think he would poach a French-American girl. I mean, I'm, come on, anyone. Yeah. So uh, I think he'd have a... Listen, he'd take someone from Bangladesh and have them be French if he needed to. Azerbaijan. <laughs> yes, like... So don't think DDA is about that. So... You have all of these figures now involved in this. It is not going to go away. Um, right. it, I do think um, it's going to take a long time. And it doesn't... Will the ISU enforce anything? I, have they ever taken a moral authority on anything in the ISU? Come on. Look yeah. at their history. So In every topic we've talked about today. Yeah. You, you know, I mean, they're just... So many of these people are just for face, you know, and not for real action. Yeah, remember, France and Russia, 2002. They were uh, in cahoots yeah. then. That is a relationship. So right. think about it. Um, yeah. I, are they really, are they going to say that they can't compete? Because if, if they say that Morgan can't compete, what else do they know about with other skaters or coaches or things? They know a lot, right. okay? How does one, well, I mean, how does one it's begin? In Germany, and all that there are people. different cases there. I mean, there's a lot, right? I mean, there's, <laughs> right? It, it becomes a really slippery slope. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot. This movement, and, uh, uh, this movement, though, about safe sport and all this, uh, it does seem decidedly North American. It, we yeah. don't see this kind of move in the international skating scene as much. No. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I mean, in terms of looking into things, hearing about things, that sort of stuff. Yeah. When you start to make a map of who knew what about what, and all the different situations in skating, it becomes really murky. And that's the thing that they need to look at is it's the culture. It's the yeah, culture. The step forward is so you don't get sentences in those emails that say, but of course we can't say anything. I honestly believe that skating is so much worse than gymnastics because you have the pairs and the dance and that culture of the older man skating with the younger girl and you have a coach that's also getting those body into the position. I mean, there's just... It's tricky. It's tricky. And who knows what the root cause is from all of it, you know, because obviously this goes back and back generational, right? right. So... There's a lot to look at. So, uh, it's tough. It's yeah. tough. But now someone had a, co a question for you because Mikhail Kolyada, um, Sinus McGee. Yeah, people always send me questions for Jonathan, and I'm like, um, I'm his press officer. Okay. <laughs> so Clay wrote, 
There's something very strange about Kolyada's, Kolyada's sinus problems. Ask Jonathan. He was back to functioning in a few days. I've had four different sinus problems with bouts of asthma and hospitalizations. I've even gotten infected after one of my surgeries, but I was able to return to work in a limited capacity slowly. For example, just months after my surgery, I was sick already with antibiotics last week and took steroids and antibiotics. Back to work this week. So such a thing, taking him off the ice completely, is very strange. I wonder if this is mental, or at least such an emotional toll he can't skate. End of thoughts on that, since I've been there. Um, uh, yes, I, I mean, of course, no one knows but the people in that particular situation. But I, as it would apply to, like, the skating, unless it was some sort of, like, vertigo-y something or other, but I don't see how that would really apply, uh, unless it was even for the travel. But after, so I had... a a big sinus surgery. I had like huge sinus problems. Um, but I had the surgery like in the middle of January and I was flying by early February. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I mean, you have to be careful of the flight, but his are recurring and in strange ways. So I don't know if he's had a formal surgery or takes it. It just seems to be, um, and I love his skating. It's since the pressure, I think, and everything. It's, see, and not sinus pressure. <laughs> no, I, I see, I see his sinuses being Karen Chen's boots. I think it's a symptom of whatever else, you yeah. know, of the, but I mean, I don't, I think that they're real, that he had sinus problems, but I don't think that's the reason he's not, he hasn't been skating since September. Right. So I think he would have tried to come skate back since then. And so. there's lots that can be done to alleviate things. And there are solutions. I mean, if they can put together people's broken limbs in two seconds, they can certainly drain someone's sinuses. I'm sure the doctor in Munich could get that together, right? Or, right. Just scrape it right out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, it's I, such a glamorous topic, but I mean, I think, and you know, he's missing a lot of momentum. Mm -hmm. Like these other two are really taking their moment. Listen, there's so much happening in Russia. Who even remembered that he wasn't even skating? We have Terry well, and kind of, be Between between the characters, we have Summer and looking so solid on those quad combos, and Ali of at least making the final. You know, even though obviously didn't go well. And then there's always Verona floating around. I mean, he has ground we, to make up. Then we have videos from Tuk Demisheva that are filmed, then they may be edited, and from her agent trying to ruin her. Now, I believe that because it seems like her her agent was likely authoring a lot a lot of those tweets when she was so sassy last year. Right, right. It's a vicious it's a vicious skating culture over there. Like there and everywhere. Quad the quad triple was encouraging. Incredible. Incredible. I I'm intrigued if we see it at nationals. Why not? Uh, what have you got to lose? We're going to see it at nationals. Clearly. Yeah. I really thought we were going to maybe see it in Zagreb. I know she put it on the practices. But. In the warm-up. She did it in the six-minute warm-up. I think yeah. was, that was to prepare for nationals. Now, yeah. the Russian, I think that the triple axel was to prepare for nationals. But, you know, we're getting a lot of messages from Russians, Jonathan. Okay. There is a it's coming. There is a conspiracy theory in Russia. Okay. That if Terry knew that Sherbakova's quad flip and Trusova's triple axel were not ready for prime time and they put it in so they would miss and that Kostanaya would win. And that Terry has a deal with Lekarnik and the Russian Federation to promote Kostrnaya because the Western public loves her. That is what Russia thinks is going on. I think that they were trying to get the first pancake out early because Russian nationals yes, is the prime Yes, that makes much time. more sense to me. Yeah. Because, I mean, and this is... Maybe it was a double, maybe it was just an added bonus. that she would Where win. for them, the Grand Prix Final is just like a testing ground for their own national. They knew they were going to be one, two, and three. Come on. Yeah, exactly. They were going to get the medal regardless. And it did seem too soon, and it did seem a little out of sync with their normal strategy, but it worked. Everybody got their medal. Like, I think it was both, okay? You test out yeah. the other elements, this girl will win, get another title. Everyone's happy. Right. So. And, and again, Costa and I is always going to have that edge up while she's got the triple axel in the short for now. And the skating, the skating skills, they're going to keep giving them to her. And it's clear, it's clear the judges want to kind of promote that type of skating. Well, truth of his crossovers are hard for Helen Keller to even Right, star. ignore. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's lots of i mean come on this is going to be the best christmas present russian nationals but it's like the day after christmas now it's a little bit late this year what but kind it's of a, the boxing day nationals okay, yeah so. what's going on with russian nationals usually it's right over christmas sometimes on christmas eve like are we on some sort of hebrew calendar that is shifting is this the day like, of the week thing or something i know I, I don't know like are we on a hebrew calendar that is like moving around like i don't you know, you never know when Passover is going to be. Like, okay, you know. that's correct for Mike. I don't. <laughs> you know, 
I, I don't know. It's but because I, I like my Russian nationals, you know, with eggnog, a nice, <laughs> nice a sprig of holly. <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness! I, well, and it's always nice because it comes around the same time as Japanese nationals. Like it really is like a lot of fun. Like skating. I have memories of going to Christmas mass with my parents, sitting in the back of the car, and like looking at Plushenko's like performance at the nationals before Sochi and being like, are they going to send them? How are they going to pull this shit off? Oh, like, yeah, that quad off. like, come on. There is nothing more religious than a Russian national event. Okay. I just, come on, Jonathan. It it's is. an experience. Yeah. <sighs> Man. I know. And Ted commentating. Ugh. I know. It, it's an unusual choice. I know. It's unusual, but they're going to give uh, a worldwide we'll stream. We'll see how it goes. It may be That's able to be. a bold move. But because they're going to provide a worldwide stream, it might be a see a live event. So we don't know. We don't know. It's like, mm, mm, be mm. and if he's involved, just the fact that we know we can get it live streamed is beyond helpful. And wouldn't you enjoy my live reactions to Ted in real time? Obviously. <laughs> okay. You'd have to almost pause so we could get them all in. <laughs> pause. Okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> There'd be like drop a pin in it and get all that response. That's the comedy. Okay. Yeah, like, exactly. That. Oh my God. I wonder if he'll still not talk during the program. I don't think he can help that. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. I hope that I hope they fly him there, right? Well, yeah, and he's not like watching. Remotely. And it's going to be on Russian Channel One. That's the Atari Network. Okay, that is the Atari, Atari TV. <laughs> right. Yes. Like that is. Atari Vision. Okay. <laughs> Atari Vision. Okay. Also, hopefully, Marina Hoffman will be on Instagram. Oh yes. Sisters. <laughs> Do you follow her yet? I mean, come on. No, now I'm going to after we had that conversation and I, I mean, realized she's... I think Terry's parents were like, obviously they were very smart and intense individuals. Okay. That was a fascinating household to have grown up in, clearly. I don't think we got enough information on the one plus one. You know, it focused too much on Terry surviving the Oklahoma City bombing and not enough on the mother, okay? Yeah, I believe exactly. We need to know the other sisters as well. Yeah. So. We didn't yeah. meet them. Come on. I want to know, what did they do as children? Were they also failed ice dancers? Like, were they... How many nose jobs have they gotten? Because we need Diana to talk about her aunts. That's Diana, what... yes, she seems very sweet. Okay, she's yeah, going she to the aristocrats. I mean, yeah. she's with Igor. Although, how long do you think? I was talking about this to someone. You know, Zagitova was not allowed to sully the Sambo seventy name by being in the last place at the final for very long. You are not allowed to look like a Terry has failed anything as a coach. Yeah, exactly. How long is she allowed to have the daughter before she plays mommy dearest? You know, we, right? never, we never saw Emily Button skate and people, you know, the old Schumann queens like to talk about that. So uh, how much do you think, uh, how long and She's going to monitor that. I have to say, in a total like cheese ball way, the interactions I saw between the two of them Very at the pool in New Orleans, like it was kind of, Mother oh she's yeah, because we had seen sort of an intense clip from that documentary where she was kind of like, well, that's what she was coaching her. That was her high. Yeah, that, that was, that was like, ooh. But this, it seemed like a really nice dynamic. And do you think is, it goes, do you think she'll be able to use her pull to get Diana to the top? I mean, I certainly hope so. Well, I don't know because it's such a different world. I know. That ice, ice, dance is becoming, ice dance is becoming almost legitimate. So that's oh, tough. Unless right? Terry gets a Polish team of her own to ice dance. I don't know how she's going to. I gonna think a Terry should send Diana to Marie France. Why not have, why not oh. consolidate the power? Okay. Send her daughter to Canada, Dave. <laughs> Well, she sent her to she the U.S. Went. She sent her to the yeah. U.S. But to, well, yeah, but it's she... still Igor. It's still Igor. Yeah, well, Igor, come on, Igor. You lost to a Georgian team at the final. He didn't look happy about that. Well, would you be? Yeah, by like literally the skin of their teeth. Igor, I don't... Listen, I always heard that Igor was a clever man, and I'm I'm having doubts. Now we're I mean, like, do Igor and Marina need to get back together? Like, what? I mean, I... Listen, Diana may need to go to Marie France. I mean... It, Igor that was, I see very unlikely. <laughs> who knows? Send her to Angelica before. Why I not? Done. Marie France and Terry, they probably are like, they probably have a lot of intellectual interests that are very similar. Chess. They could go coach shopping together. Yeah. Chess, fashion. I mean, like, come on. I, I with uh, cheekbones. Yeah. Cheek, I, I mean, I feel like they would have a lot in common, right? Yeah. Ice dance. Put them in a house. Film it. Yeah. Right? Come on. I would love to. You could be roomies watch. at the next Olympics. <laughs> I mean, Marie France would be like, I think Diana has a unique charisma for the sport. You know? Oh my Looks God. like she's having fun. <laughs> oh my God. Hubble and Donahue's parents. Imagine those text messages that would be going out. I mean, they love to comment, okay? If, it, if that person came, I mean, come on. What do you think is going on right now that 
you know, people have always said that ice dance, as long as the ranking stays the same, it, the, there is peace in the rink. When someone upends someone, all hell breaks loose. And so, it happens. It is happening now often, which I think is kind of fun. But yeah. And the British Federation, because, kind of you know, the British, I was talking to someone, I'm not going to say them by name. I was talking to someone that was explaining, you know, there aren't many high level skaters in Britain, but they do have an outsized number of ISU officials. So they'll always have the political pull. Notice right. how much Marie France gave that, gives them the attention grabbing crowd-pleasing routines, and they just climb and climb and climb and climb in the rankings. I mean, they're a very right. fun, attractive team. They've got everything going for them. A lot of they, pizzazz. They're yeah. becoming a force, okay? Yeah. Just yeah. remember, all those ISU officials, forever, in the UK. All those Brits, like it's the late 70s, early 80s, all over again. <laughs> Listen, I wouldn't would not mess with the UK. Vanessa Riley will give you that five. I was just say, hey, we need like a, a Vanessa Riley like emoji or something. <laughs> Listen, for when you get really judgy about something, instead the British, of like Judge Judy gift, we can just send Vanessa Riley talking about Fideo's pants. I mean, Canada is passive aggressive. Britain will be sanctimonious and be like, we invented this, darling. We invented yeah, us. They're aggressive aggressive. <laughs> we invented the figures. We invented ice dance. Ice dance. What do you know? You yeah, know. exactly. It's true. It's true. Listen, okay. <laughs> okay, I mean, come on. And now I, they're voguing. <laughs> they're voguing. It's fabulous. We need Vanessa mm -hmm. Riley back. How's she doing? You know, anyone yeah, else? someone drop her a line. <laughs> Apparently, Sonia Bianchetti was in the front row at Italian National. I love that she always goes and attends these events and let us know that she had a, a wonderful time at the championship talking with old friends. So Receives she, her public. Yeah, exactly. She should, okay? I mean, they're so... I love her. The queen. Yeah, queen, now's I, the time we get to catch up on all those nationals. I'm excited. I know, and it seems... Look, Marie France was beating Julin again. At Spanish Nationals, after the rhythm dance, that Olivia Smart, the Grease that program. That is a good rhythm dance. That, that dance works for Five them. point lead over yeah. Sada Hurtado. Not so, nothing. I know. I know. I love Sada. I wish that she were still with Marie France. I would have gladly gotten rid of Adria instead of her. She's, yeah. She's yeah. the star. But Yeah. But she know. clearly needed to do a thing. She needed to do a thing. So, yeah. <clears throat> and, oh my God. And did you see, like, Jim's student was making comments about the, um, the Morgan Cipra situation, about, like, oh, my God, you know Jim was having heart palpitations. And, okay. it, yeah, if, if history has taught us anything, it's tread lightly. Those comments will be remembered, whatever they are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. we have... yeah, take that second to think about it. Think it through. Listen, then... Terry's comments, come on. They're translations immediately, okay? Yeah, it just reminded me of those like moments in college where I'm thankful I didn't have social media, where like you could have sent something, and then in the morning you're like, thank God I didn't. Restraint you of know? tongue and pen. Like, yeah, it's... Exactly. <laughs> Time to do some journaling, and don't post it publicly. <laughs> oh my goodness. I mean, that's why they But we're the... kind of glad they did, because it's literally playing out in front of us, in Russian social oh media. Oh my goodness. Like, yeah. But meanwhile... Do you know that Tarasova loves a Christmas tree too, Jonathan? I, yeah, we're basically twins. <laughs> <laughs> she loves her ornaments. She loves decorating. She was above the fray yesterday just posting about her Christmas tree. See? And she does. Yeah, like a selfie, her with like the ball. <laughs> and I love that like Plashenko was defending Tarasova because they used to be rivals when, you know, he was right. Venetian and right, but. But they're joining forces in this special effort. Yeah. Well, I'm sure she helped him get to the Olympics that year. So I well, mean, she helped everyone get to the Olympics somehow, right? You can't swing a dead cat without hitting a Tarasova like connection. <laughs> yeah. Come on. I mean, we love her. Okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Apparently, she like sometimes shows up at the Whole Foods in New Jersey. You know, because sometimes she comes to the Ice House. I mean, Could you on. imagine just being at the salad bar next to her? She's like. <laughs> I, I don't skate at the Ice House because I want to actually focus on the skating. But I imagine that if I were... I mean, come on. You never know who's going to come in that. It's the scene. You're there for the scene. Who's going to be in that cesspool? No wonder no one's good at the Ice House anymore. Because who could... I mean, there's too much going on. Okay? You can't focus. Yeah, it's too exciting. We have Tara Maudlin representing Gracie. She's, like, having her do all of the interviews. She, Again, more of the same. It's like, this is the same There story. is something so right about that. But she did officially... Nick McCarville wanted us to know that she fired Vincent Rest in Court. Honey, we knew that three weeks ago. Okay, Nick? Right, like yeah. Timely. Yeah. Hot off the press. He really is the Ryan Seacrest of skating. He really is. You know, it's... <laughs> Love her. <laughs> just as insightful. It's great. Yeah, amazing. It? Um, <laughs> I love it. You know? Oh, God. It's, it's been a fun 
fun week, Jonathan. Yeah, what was your favorite news tidbit? What shocked you the most? I always enjoy a WADA moment. Yeah. I enjoy when people were talking about Lupron. And, yeah. um, and I enjoy that there's going to be a list coming out because people start getting very paranoid about it. When it's specific. That's the thing. It's so easy to just kind of brush it off when it's vague and I broad. Know. And... and then remember when Nikita didn't finish the free dance at Russian Nationals and there was all that theatrics and then there was a lot of conspiracy theories about that because people weren't sure because he was with Morozov and then, you know... Different coaches have been accused of different things in Russia. So we've heard of stories about blood doping over the years. I mean, it is great. Okay. I mean, people talk when you have Russians training in New Jersey. I mean, people just talk openly about things, how much metals cost, how much drugs people are on. It's great. Okay. We do need an Icarus part de. So we really do. Yeah. And like, I think. I just think he didn't know about like skating and gymnastics. I mean, the personalities are so much better. Okay, right? right? Come on, don't you want to know? Have costumes. <laughs> don't you want to know the drugs that the rhythmic gymnastics girls are on? Oh, apparently, right. when you retire from rhythmic gymnastics because Arena Wiener is married to a billionaire, she will buy you a flat, cars, new car, organs. Yeah, whatever. like yeah, yeah. But you better retire when she says you're ready to be done. So, yeah, and enjoy your parting gifts. How long yeah. do you think a Terry will coach for? Because I think eventually she'll have, you know, Danny will just be doing her dirty work, right? Well, and I would think, you know, for as much intensity as she requires and she brings, that has to be exhausting also. Right. So, And I want her to look young. I don't want her to, like, exhaust herself forever. Yeah, I don't think she's in danger of looking exhausted anytime. I think so. give us eight more years, so Terry. Then you could become, like... Bizarre. Yeah, I think two Olympic cycles, that'll be, what, like 300 rounds of sing- <laughs> skaters that yes. go through. <laughs> so yes. uh, we'll see. I think she'll do it as long as it's working. And at some point, it may no longer work, depending on how, you know, judging and regulations go. But I think she'll do it as long as she's on top. I mean, come on. I mean, she's giving us so much this season, okay? Yeah, it always has, really. We just didn't know to look until... You know, after Sochi. Now we have Marina, <laughs> and now we have Marina Hoffman, okay? She's the best thing to skating. Remember there used to be that woman, Esta, that claimed to be Pasha Grishuk's aunt? I mean, Marina Hoffman right. has really supplanted Esta, okay? okay? I imagine that there will be, like, YouTube channels for this video. Like, new accounts, like, on Twitter, Marina Hoffman. Come on. Spoof right? Accounts. That would be a good handle for somebody. Yeah, like a spoof Instagram page. Amazing, right? That Get would on. be... Get on it. I think we need all the sisters on, like, an Oprah special. Yes. Oh, my God. We were just watching a video about, like, Dolly Parton's America, great podcast. They used to interview, like, Rosalind Kind and Dolly Parton's sister and, like, yeah. Roger Clinton. They'll all be on, like, old talk shows. You can see those clips on YouTube. We need the okay. Terry sisters, okay? okay? We really... Yeah, we do. Singing again, and the theme song has to be sisters. Yeah. Sisters. Oh, my God. We really need to know more about this family, okay? There's... Yeah. How about... And I would like to... When is a Terry going to write her own autobiography? Like, what was... The, the title of Horkina's was like balancing on the balance beam in high heels or something like balancing in high heels. I mean, something fabulous. A Terry yeah. needs something like that good. Okay. Yeah. Something designer. I mean, the Russians in gymnastics also have so much, such crazy energy because you have the Rodionenkos who aren't that skilled, but they are constantly having drama with all sorts of people. I mean, it's okay. good. This is a culture we love everywhere. We they respond are... to. Yeah, of course. Jonathan, We're we have drawn to our... it. We have all the same interests. We love the ballet. We love some theater. We love expensive right. things. I mean, come some on. Some colorful onion dome, like church toppers. Like, yes. this is great. Yeah. This is our country, okay? Right. We all watched Catherine the Great, the miniseries. It was wonderful. Love Helen yes. Mirren. Yeah. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm sure you love caviar, right? Certainly yeah. your friends yeah. did last night. I mean, that would have been a nice little spread. Yeah, it was a caviar crowd. <laughs> I was the one that cut that Yule log. I wasn't sure if it was there for decoration, but, you know. No, you were supposed to. It was kind of good, right? It was kind of good. You know, I, I cut that. I was like, you know what? I can't say I knew what one was until last night, but we had one. We had one, had one. you know. It's great. great. Happy holidays. <laughs> also, I mean, if we're going to talk about the other nationals going on, I would say that we could do a little video later on in the week, but Jason Brown. Nice. Jason Brown had a rough, short program in Zagreb, but he was the king of Zagreb. And Tukdemeshiva, queen of Zagreb, and Kana Leduc came back to win it over Tara and Danny. But yeah. Alexa and Chris did not go uh, to Zagreb, so... Probably smart. Yeah, I think they're regrouping, so... Lots happening in this world. I mean, oh. the Nationals are really... We're about to enter a really fun time. My favorite time of the year. 
I yeah. have to say. It is the most wonderful time of the year, isn't it, Dave? <laughs> oh, my goodness. And, like, who knows if Japan will have new technology. You know, they have, you know, last year we got the the height and then, I don't, I'm always, like, people are always measuring jumps in centimeters on Instagram and they always, like, run it, whatever. I mean, the fans are next level. I mean, well, yeah, and I just think of Sandra, you know, even when she was talking about that score box, she's like, doesn't that take you out of the moment if you're, like, preoccupied? The score box is always wrong. Do you ever notice that when something is going to get negative GOE, it usually shows positive? So it's completely, yeah. it's not really worth shit, okay? Yeah, That's exactly. Score. That's and score. it keeps fluctuating so much after, so when you think someone's just helped someone out, whoops, sorry then it turns out that they haven't. And like, that's when Chris was helpful because he was explaining why this score is about to plummet or skyrocket. So. Sandra's really right about everything. Remember Morgan was supposed to be on her show, then he wasn't. I mean, come on, like it's all very- the woman knows things, yeah. The woman is smart. Very intuitive. Okay. Yeah. And then, um, <clears throat> let's see. Sandra knows best. She really does. She gets skating, okay? She understands. Yeah. There's like a Sandra O spoof in here somewhere. Like Sandra knows. I don't know. We'll work on it. We'll work on it. How do you know Sandra O? Oh, you don't watch Grey's Anatomy. Okay. Anyway. I know that she's a person. Wasn't she an Under the Tuscan Sun? Yes. <laughs> okay. <that> movie. <laughs> um, anyway, I keep getting more and more of those videos digitized. So they be more because... I there, have... you're getting some really excellent ones right now. You're right in the thick of like a really good era. Yeah. The 95 Riders Ladies Championship. Nancy Fluff. Oof. It's the Nancy interview. Yeah. Listen, Jonathan, when she said that there was no motivation because if you're first or last, you get paid basically the same. That's true. Yeah. Nancy well, wasn't wrong. Like and Scott acted that. like he was God and offended. He loved to be sanctimonious. He would do great in Russia. Remember, yeah. he doesn't like Sonia Bianchetti. His book made that very clear. That first right. book, Scott's first book, remember... Highlighted it. I went before that interview. You're I talking about landing it. Land, yes, that's the landing key. it. Right? Yeah, not yeah, this okay. eight rules of him pretending to be all pious and shit. No, we want right. the one where he is like bad mouthing, settling scores, talking yeah. about Debbie Thomas, Dorothy Hamill, um, Nancy, not liking how much people charge for professional fees. I mean, that ego in that book is crazy. He hated that Scott Kramer. I was like, oh, I need to see Scott Kramer skating. They right. had issues when he was with the bossies. He thought that they favored Scott Kramer over him i mean that book is really like <gasps> ripping and yeah the real feelings going on there <laughs> the real feelings i mean he was at the height everyone had to call him skate god in the back not narcissistic at all love no no, no i think that's really normal that's really normal, that's really normal right <laughs> like he was mad at dick button basically saying he was robbed the world pro that he was trying to prop up robin cousins over him and like manipulate i mean that is the book of the all need time. for that validation, like that. That well, he's very that. he's very diminutive, Jonathan. Okay. Well, yes, correct. correct. So is Napoleon. I'm just saying it was. Just that saying. is the greatest book. One okay. might say there's a bit of a complex going on. <laughs> he talked about Evie Scott Bold. I mean, oh my goodness, you know that was. But really, we just were here for Mary. We always want Mary Scott Bold stories over Evie. No, I like both of the Scott Bolds. Okay. Okay. And I want to know about Anne, who is married to Mark Militano, who was Sandra's ex-boyfriend. And they had some breakup in the snow at the Olympics. I mean, come on. He was writing music. It's all magical. It's all Hallmark Channel. And yeah. then he was writing music. He wrote those Nancy short program songs. I mean, it's all great. <laughs> all within that same circle. Oh okay. His new wife messaged me. And she was like, oh, we love the show. Yes, thank you for posting that music. Also, did you? there's a Nancy program that I posted. America, the golden dream. Now she won silver, so I thought that that was a strange choice. I know, why invite it, yeah. But it's Nancy skating to horrible music. And then they have voiceovers of great speeches in American history as Nancy's doing her camel spin, her layback. Jonathan. <laughs> I, yeah. All of her signature moves. I'm having Freddie teach Signature me speeches, yeah. To signature speeches, so. A lot going on. When are yeah. you coming skating with us, Jonathan? People want to see you. I know, but you. now you're intimidating me. I feel like I have to get like, like, like I have got to like dust off my skills no. before you. No, no, no. I do. Yes, there I are do. two edge classes on with group lessons in Montclair. There's one. Like earlier. I need to work back up to taking an edge. Class. No, there's a there's a more beginner class, Jonathan. You could come to okay. Jersey. I know you'll need your passport. Okay, you I know will. what? Anyway, I have TSA pre-check, global entry. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. <laughs> You come to Montclair. Everyone will know who you are. They'll be very excited to see you. 
Because you know, in a rink, it goes through wildfire. Everyone co- finds a reason to come say hello. Okay. Amazing, amazing. Which I like. That happened when I was skating at Chelsea Piers earlier this year. Right. Okay. So you come over. You will feel like such a star, right? Okay. Fame at last. Okay. Wear something that makes you look slim. You know, the whole okay. deal. All right. I'll Ludwig can pick out the outfit. Ludwig can pick out the outfit, you know. Yeah, it'll maybe be he can do your hair. I want to know how long he spends on his. Anyway, right. the whole thing is going on. Anyway, when you are there, there's a beginner class before, and then we could take the other class together. So okay, all right. Listen. It's good motivation. It's good motivation. Yes, we can come skating. Oh my god! It'll be a whole thing. It'll be lovely. Listen, you need to know the characters of skating. I mean, it's... I know. I need to get to know the the Jersey scene. It does seem. Come on, then you could go deep to, with characters. <laughs> then you could go to the Palisades Mall and you could skate with Freddie Boudet. I mean, come that's on. That's right. That's right. You haven't seen and, that. Flip. You know, like sure. mall skating, just channel my inner Tanya. That's always been a dream. Yes. So, okay. Yeah. You don't mm-hmm. even know, it, like the people that used to be in Muncie. They'll tell you the stories about when they were training with Kyoko Ina, and she was nice to no one. I mean, those are legendary. Okay. 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 <laughs> and like people. People are talking about John Zimmerman, I mean, from back in the day. I mean, there, he was in Hackensack. He was, you know, he used to skate with the other Stiegler sister. I mean, there are stories there. So Yeah, there's a lot of material together there, I would imagine. It's yeah. a lot of material. It's a lot going on in skating, Jonathan. It is the time to come, okay? Yes. Okay, done and done. Skating loves a scandal, okay? I know. <laughs> Don't we all? Okay. <laughs> this. 17 in every rank, you know? That's right. If Christine Brennan actually followed skating, imagine like what she could know, right? I mean, it would be incredible, so. At every turn, at every turn, it's a bit upsetting, but. Um, you know, no, but I will come skating with you. I mean, Phil Hirsch, I don't even think he could go on like a bike ride anymore, because how is he going to keep track of it all? It's true. There is much Although, to keep up with. I follow Phil Hirsch, and like, so you had a friend that's from Emerson who's a conductor, right? And I was like, okay. you know Nick Hirsch? He's very up and coming in, in the conducting world. He's yeah. like, he's like, I don't think I know him rep, but I'm sure I'll find well, him. Well, he does more pops concerts, and he's out of Baltimore, I think. So it's like a different, different scene, I think. Would he not get invited to the party? Is he not like... No, he should be invited to the party. <laughs> but it's like that those kinds of like organizations just are different, like pops organizations and stuff. He does like movie scores and like. Oh. Nice so like that. the Mary Scott Bold things. Yeah, I think it's a little, it's a little above that. No, because <laughs> Nancy loved to skate to the Boston Pops Orchestra. Remember? Well, there you go. In the same way, the Boston Pops people are different than the BSO. Oh my God! Could he please do a tribute to Nancy Kerrigan? I mean, come on. His father's the Olympic sports reporter. Come on. We need Nick Hirsch. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Very fascinating. I was ex- then I was explaining to your friend all about who Phil Hirsch is and what a legend and how he's kind of like our uncle from afar that comes to Thanksgiving. I mean, right. We need. I mean, come on. We're gonna get them to come around. All these people, they'll get there. They'll get there. Listen. <laughs> I was like, when Phil Hirsch found out that Jonathan was an opera singer, I mean, you don't even know, honey. It was like... (laughs) (laughs) We did, like, we stopped watching skating at Nationals for a brief period of time to just unpack things that were happening at the Lyric, but... (laughs) I I was like, he went to Yale, he likes to speak French, like, you don't even know, okay? So fancy. So fancy, Jonathan, there's so much going on. But skating attracts fancy. It does. It's flash and trash, okay? And that's why we're here, yeah. <laughs> I keep hearing rumors that, like, Skate America could return to Vegas. God, I hope so. Don't you think? Just well, not... you know, I was sick that whole time, so it was like... You I... were very grumpy. It was not... Yeah, well, no, I mean, I had, like, the flu the whole time from visiting my sister and her kids, so it's like, I was, like, out of sorts that whole you don't, time. You don't belong with children. No, 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 no. Although my nieces are fab, but, like, I can't... I was like, this just made me ill, and... That was tough because you know those competitions is like kind of nonstop. I do like your cousin. She seemed very nice, but I was more into her boyfriend with the good hair because he's from upstate. He went to college in upstate New York. I mean, we were talking about Ithaca. He oh, had, he never, did he know Karen Chan? Listen, we were talking about like a coffee shop open by the cult, the way okay. that there was like a bomb scare in the Walmart when it was built. I mean, come on, there's lots. You to really get into the nitty gritty at these things, Jonathan. I was like. Boom, uh, boom, boom. Doing the rounds. Okay. Doing the rounds. I mean, yeah, exactly. Yes. We met that woman from that she lives in Miami, but you go with her to Texas when you get spotted by people. I mean, right, right. That's when we were singing Amarillo and someone came up to at a restaurant and was like, Are you Jonathan from the skating lesson? And she's like, Wait, this skating thing really is a thing, isn't it? <laughs> People were like, oh, you know skating. Oh, you're from New Jersey. It had the same reaction. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah. 
You just hand him a biography. Listen, there was that man in those pants that he kept asking us where we were going. And I was like, how many martinis did you have tonight? I just told you. Like, <laughs> but nice to know he's interested. <laughs> yes, yes. And I was like, did you... So the best story before we close up is that this very drunk man that was in these like very fashiony pants, again, not down to earth at all. So you have the right. people from Jersey who they keep talking about, like we're from some foreign planet. He's like, well, about 20 years ago, my mo he was asking if we decorate for Christmas. And he was like, you know, 20 years ago, my mother gave me a gold Christmas tree and it came down and I saw so much dust on it. So I just threw it out. <laughs> and Michael Shanley goes, well, did you buy another one? And he just like, looked at him and I couldn't tell if he was being elitist or drunk. Like the, it was just like vacant. Like or both. <laughs> do you, have you ever met Carolina Herrera? I only work with her for like this. Well they're like they were like partners. Like so he was like <laughs> yeah. yeah he seems down to earth too. But very lovely. Okay. <laughs> it's like you when they're skating though when they're like, oh you watch ice skating? Mm -hmm. And you're like, yeah, yeah kind of. Oh, please. He had, he gave us all the European bullshit. We had to ask him, like, so what made you want to move to Harlem? Oh, well, I used to live in other neighborhoods and I wanted something different and more unique. And I mean, I don't can't even do his accent, but it was like so peppered with that kind of, I was like, this is why Jonathan was like, yes, I love the French interview about how they didn't watch skating. I'm like, he gets this from Ludwig every effing day. I'm like, oh my God, they are down to earth people. Okay. Love it's, art. it's art. It's art. <laughs> Okay, this is the realm that Jonathan's living in. Meanwhile, I'm hanging out with Tammy, who's the Christmas cracker, okay? Exactly. She is my girl. Ass. Yeah, exactly. Okay. All right. Good people. <laughs> Hold an edge and look sexy. Bye, guys. <laughs>